Culture Vulture, European Countries, Day. So one of the things that we um, enjoy is when we have experiences of visiting places and they tie in. Um, and this is a tie in to an experience we both shared um, earlier this year because we were fortunate enough to teach a jive workshop just south of Limoges in France and um, we took the opportunity to visit the place um, the Marta village Orador Seglan. Now Orador Seglan if you've not heard of it back in the day there was an amazing documentary called The World at War and Laurence Olivier famously uh, narrated the series and the opening shot and explanation of the first episode is Laurence Olivier explaining how the Germans um, drove into this village and massacred everyone in it. Now after the war Charles de Gaulle, General Charles de Gaulle said that the village should remain exactly as it is as a, a memorial for the victims which became the martyrs they became known as the martyrs the martyrs village it's a harrowing experience but i would strongly suggest it's something you should do if you have the opportunity and orador seglan is just west of limoges now the story is the german das reich regiment was south of the village and the d-day landings had happened on the 6th of June and they had been ordered to get as fast as they could to um, reinforce the defence. The French resistance um, just um, did all they could to try and stop them and probably the most successful thing they did was one of the train workers over a period of time had been put in acid on the train links and had broken all the train links so they couldn't use any carriages so they had to drive with their tanks and artillery up through France and it took them ages and they were getting harassed by um, sporadic fighting from the French resistance trying to slow them down and I think they even um, kidnapped one of the leaders of one of the German um, battalions so anyway for whatever reason, it's never been explained. No one knows why they did it because Orador Seglan has no connection with the French resistance. There was never any French resistance there. They didn't have arms there. They didn't have any sort of weaponry. So the Das Reich Regiment surrounded the village and gathered everyone together. Now. The occupants of Orador Seglan had no idea why this was happening because during the war life just carried on even though it was harsh. They grew their own food, they bred their own rabbits to eat and they welcomed people from other district refugees. And one of the communities that they welcomed there was from Alsace Lorraine here. And they spoke Alsatian which the local people didn't understand and they also had people from other villages and towns in the north and they spoke their own regional dialect but within this community in Orador Seglan there was over 500 people in this small town um, village it is a hub of the little area they didn't expect or suspect anything untoward and so when they were all told together they thought they were just gonna show their papers and um, and so the Germans separated them they separated the women and children and there's three schools in Ordoxaglan and they were marched into the church and the men were divided into six groups and they were marched into barns and then the Germans massacred all of them um, only about six people managed to get out one of them an old lady from the church who came climbed through the stained glass window and dropped down an embankment <laughs> and ran away still got shot and she played dead but um it's, it's a harrowing place to go to as is auschwitz 
but Auschwitz is also a sort of place you'd like, you should go to just to see what it is that people do to each other. So we're going to put some photographs of our experience there. Um, what's even worse is that even though a large number of the victims were from Alsace Lorraine, where we are now, members of the Das Reich Regiment were also from Alsace Lorraine and were French. So there is, there was SS battalions that were French and Belgian and Dutch. So French people were party to murdering French people in that under the name of um, the German SS. I would say go. It's because um, after they murdered nearly everyone, they burnt the place down and it is worth going there. So to make sense of it, I've tried, I've been there a couple of times and I mapped it out and I took my son there and tried to show him around and say what happened where. But I didn't really get a, a, an experience of the reality to try and compute in my brain what it was like. What I found best this time, I bought a book called The Silent Village and that was amazing because what it did, it, it's from a, an Englishman who's a French historian who studied the families and the people and he puts everything in place. So all the houses, the businesses, the hotels, who used what, who was related to who, because there's fact generations of family still um, were there up until um, the, the massacre happened. So. Before you go or after you go, try and get hold of the book, The Silent Village. Um, I got it on, on Amazon. You can buy it at the place. And um, try and get it clear in your head what it is you're going to see. What was really harrowing for, for Sally was seeing the photographs of the people. Um, As you walk through to go into that village. It was just dreadful. That's played on my mind. So no, I didn't need to read the book. Mm, but I would strongly recommend the book. Um, just finished by saying, uh, may, they rest, may their souls rest in peace.